This video film is a presentation of a three-year European beam trawling research project, which ran from 1993 to 1996. This project was aimed at reducing the bycatches of round fish taken by beam trawlers by using a simple and effective modification to their nets without losses of flatfish. Maximum bycatch regulations, as enforced in Belgium and the Netherlands, reduce the allowable catches of certain roundfish species in flatfish beam trawl fisheries. These bycatches can't always be avoided, and as a consequence, fish with a potential commercial value must be discarded. These discarded fish have no chance of survival, and therefore don't contribute to the conservation of fish stock. Beam trawls are used to target bottom living species like flatfish. From underwater observations, it is known that roundfish like haddock and whiting tend to rise up in a trawl, but flatfish stay low down. If these and other behavioural differences between flatfish and roundfish can be exploited, then it is likely that the roundfish discards may be reduced without affecting the targeted catches of flatfish and other bottom living species. This is the concept behind the species selective beam trawl. Three countries with major beam trawling fleets took part in this project Belgium, Holland and Great Britain. Scale models were made of the different beam trawl types from each participating country. Different modifications intended to allow roundfish escapes were built into these models which were then tested in the flume tank in Hull. This allowed an appraisal of promising modifications for refining and testing at sea. The flume tank tests showed that there were three main practical modifications worth considering. A cutaway cover, a square mesh top panel, and a very large mesh top panel. These three designs were built into full-scale beam trawls and underwater observations were made at sea. The full-scale sea trials established confidence in the selective gear designs whilst under a commercial fishing situation. Commercial fishing trials to test the fishing performance of the modifications was the next stage in the project. In each of the three participating countries' beam trawl fleets, major subfleets were identified by engine power and by beam length. Full-scale modifications were tested with each of these major subfleets. Beam trawl types are divided into two main groups, the R-nets and the V-nets. R-nets are common in British and Belgian beam trawl fisheries. They have rounded chain mats to keep stones out of the gears and can be worked on rough ground. V-nets are common in Dutch beam trawl fisheries. These nets have V-shaped arrays of tickler chains instead of chain mats, and the nets are much longer than in the equivalent R-net. V-nets are usually worked on clean grounds. This sequence shows the Belgian cutaway cover on an R-net. The cutaway is to allow the escape of round fish that rise up in this part of the gear. Cutaway covers can be made easily from conventional gears by removing the netting and reinforcing the aperture with a new head rope. This is the British cutaway cover on an R net. The cutaway represents 45% of the area of the cover panel. This cutaway is smaller than the Belgian version, but is made in a similar way.
The Belgian square mesh top panel completely replaces the conventional diamond mesh in the cover section of the net. Square mesh remains open with increasing tension and these open meshes present good escape opportunities for round fish but not for flat fish. This shows the Dutch large meshed top panel on a V-net. Here, the entire top section of the net down to the extension has been removed completely. The large diamond meshes serve to keep the structure of the net intact, while at the same time presenting good escape opportunities down the long V-net. The method for each of the fishing trials was to compare a modified gear on one side of the boat with a conventional gear on the other side. Scientific staff monitored the catch data from each haul by measuring fish lengths and recording catch weights for certain species. On some of the sea trials, the catches made with the modified gears were stored separately from those made with conventional gears. These catches were landed separately to test the differences in the market value of the fish. Catch data was carefully recorded and analysed back ashore. The trials with each participating country showed a mixture of results. A large meshed top panel in V-nets gave a decrease in whiting and cod bycatches for all vessel sizes. The British design of cutaway cover had no significant effect on the catches, however. The use of either a Belgian pattern of cutaway top panel or a Belgian square meshed top panel worked for large vessels but didn't seem to be as effective for the smaller Euro cutters. The efficiency of the selective devices depended mainly on the time that round fish were exposed to them. It was found that round fish needed time to react to the escape opportunity. The British design of small cutaway cover at normal towing speeds didn't work, but the Belgian design of larger cutaway did. Increasing the escape aperture still further began to incur losses of targeted flatfish, however. This study has shown that it is possible to substantially reduce the bycatches of roundfish species in bean trawl fisheries while minimizing the effect on the targeted flatfish catch rates. For V-nets, large meshed top panels can be used. For R-nets, either cutaway covers or square mesh top panels may be used, but for the Euro cutter class of vessel fishing with R-nets, the trial's results do not appear to justify the use of species-selective devices. Investigations have shown that the financial effect of the use of a species-selective device on the annual earnings of a bean trawler will be minimal. This is because roundfish form a relatively small part of the total annual catch. Losses of flatfish during the experiments could not always be completely avoided but can be minimized by carefully choosing the design of selective device. In the face of increasing international pressure to conserve fish stocks, species selective devices like these must be regarded as potential tools which can be taken up by the fishing industry in time of need. <laughs>